Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Culture Hour. My name is Shelley Smith. I am your culture guru. We talk about everything known to man in leadership, career pathing, the latest topics, and of course, having some amazing guests on. Today, I'm thrilled and honored to give you a little bit of background of today's guest, Michael Simpson. Michael is the CEO and the founder of Parent, and he works to empower future generations by providing personalized career exploration, resources, educational development courses for workplace, government, and educational agencies. He's got a passion for this. He previously spent a decade as a certified coach, and then he spent years since working with individuals and again, uh, government and educational um, institutions on career pathing. Uh, thank you so much for being here today, Michael. How are you? You know, I'm doing really, really well. It's a wonderful spring day in, in Denver. Very nice. Well, hey, you can't you can't beat that. Is there anything additional you would like to tell the viewers and the listeners about your background before we kind of get into your specialty and the impact? Uh, yeah, I would say that you know everybody wants to bring their you know full self to the work that they do, and and I you know that's what we want with our employees. And um, the creation of my company is really kind of a um an equation of every aspect of my life uh with the this company being the the sum of it i i grew up in a very difficult environment um a lot of diversity in my home and a lot of difficulties and and um i was not able to follow the the normal path like most a lot of people don't like you know go to four year college and and you know then you'll figure it out and then go down that path. Very few people actually end up in the careers that they uh, went to college for. And um, I spent, I spent probably 10 years um, with mentors and coaches, um, just people who saw value in me, helping me find my way. And um, I have built this company specifically to help those alongsiders that are helping others. And, to hopefully um, allow you know massive generational change uh, for uh, people that didn't necessarily follow the direct path and life didn't afford them that opportunity. So um, excited about um, my uh, experience leading to um, changing the experience of, of others. I love that. I love that. Um, I did not take the typical uh, path as well myself, so I, I do not have that formal educational background. My educational background is life experiences and sitting in the multitude yeah. of boats of business, growing up yeah. in a family-owned business, so I get that and, and very much appreciate it. Before we dive into a couple of specific topics of, of how you do what you do. I love the name pair and the name of your company. Can you give us a little bit about that? Because I, I find that intriguing as well. Uh, well, uh, I, my pair team will probably kill me, but it, it, <laughs> has, to do with an, it has to do with a naked sauna. Um, so that's probably not what you were expecting. Um, <laughs> and so I love it already though. <laughs> It's an intriguing story. So my, my wife and I, uh, we, we lived in Russia for quite some time, my wife for 14 years and I and myself for seven years. And, mm -hmm. and when we came back to the United States, we, we started a, a, this business and we started another business. The other business was a chocolate truffle business called the Chocolate Bordello. And it, it, it's similar, it had similar purpose, but it was, it was all about you can't judge a person or a truffle by what you see on the outside. Um, you... Um, have to um, experience them first uh, before you can, uh, you have to accept them uh, before you can make any type of a judgment. So, you know, when you take a truffle inside yourself, um, you're experiencing it. Uh, you have to accept it first, and then you can actually make it, make a judgment. I wish we did that with people. And so yeah. that was what the chocolate bordello was about. And we, we and so we were doing a, a chocolate and wine pairing in the afternoon in Breckenridge at Ridge Street at a chocolate place in wine place there and I was in my sauna we had a place up in the mountains I was in my sauna that morning and I was racking my brain about what to call this company 
And and so I was sitting in there, and all of a sudden I, I said, well, what is the essence of what we do? Well, we pair people to jobs, careers, education, and services. And and being from the South, we don't use unnecessary consonants at the ends of words. And so I just ran to my computer, buck naked, um, and uh, fortunately only my wife was there, and I Googled Perrin, and the only thing I found was the middle name of a of a politician in Thailand, and I I went to uh, a website uh, URL purchasing uh, organization, and I found that that particular URL was for sale on an auction for fourteen dollars. I bid. The sale ended the next day, and I was the only bidder. And there you go. We're love parents. It. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Not the story you thought you were going to get. It's not. <laughs> well, you know what? It's the the root of how it happened is not. However, the meaning behind it, I kind of had you know manifested my own version of what I thought the reason yeah. was, and there there was a little bit of similarity in that. And by the way, your PI or your PI, your PR firm should actually love that story. I, I think that um, it will not be forgotten for the viewers and listeners now because yeah. they have the background. So I, I absolutely, I love that. I love that. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. Well, let's get into today's topic. Um, I've got in front of me a few of the things that you do, and I want to connect the tissue for, again, the viewers and the audience around the workplace culture, the impact that we have on individuals. Because I always say, you know, our employees or our potential employees are people first. And this goes to the heart of what you do and why you do, I believe. And the more that we can set up and focus in on the strengths and the patches as individuals, the more we can attract the talent that we're looking for, keep the talent, and, and obviously grow, help them grow in the career pathing. So some of the things that you can talk about today, and I, I really want you to pick and choose to what you think is going to resonate the most, yeah. is... Um, the traditional college path that we talked about, it's not mm -hmm. the only path. So how can we attract high school graduates and help them better, pre better prepare a career path or some sort of a, a path and clarity inside either individually with their education or inside of a company? And then the, another thing completely different is you've got down here how certifications and qualifications in general should be overhauled in the U.S. and yeah. to work better with the market needs, the employer needs, and obviously the individual needs. So I'm going to let you pick and choose and we'll get into it today. Uh, it's hard to choose because I, I, I just think about both those things all the time. But l let me just take the first one since I, I've had now 30 seconds extra to think about that question <laughs> than the other. Um, yeah, well, one of the biggest things is for, I'll first talk about the reasons why. Uh, the reasons why you would want to hire someone with a non-traditional path. Uh, the statistics around hiring people, especially people that may have much, much less education or experience, um, are quite phenomenal. It is actually just plain good math and good business to hire people from uh, workforce programs or et cetera, because what you end up with is a more grateful employee. When people know they've been given an opportunity, they become more grateful. Um, when they know that they've been given a chance and maybe didn't deserve what they got, but you're betting on them, it raises the bar for them. We work with workforce programs like Hope House for Teen Moms, Goodwill, um, Activate IT, all these different types of programs that help adults reskill. And what we find statistically from a lot of these programs is they tend to average about 90 to 92 percent retention rate after two years. That's amazing. And surveys from employers um, say that the direct managers are sometimes 30 to 40 percent more satisfied with people from those types of programs than they are from recent college graduates. What you're not going to get is the starter job when someone goes through a program to then 
get a new career, they're not going to approach it like the starter job, like a recent college graduate would. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't have any problems with education. I have several PhDs and doctorates who work for me, right? And I hire them because of the education that they had. But the degree as a proxy for ability. Um, especially with a basic bachelor's degree, is it gives you a false positive. It doesn't create a good filter for the quality of a human being or their ability to perform. One of the first things you should do to attract talent that um, might not have that type of experience is to change your job description. Um, I'll give you one example. Um, we were hiring a marketing specialist. It's a, it's a relatively entry-level position. It, it helps to have some experience in marketing. That was somewhat required. Um, and we wanted to get um, you know, a broader talent pool. And so we removed education requirements completely from the job description, and we did, and nothing changed, not one thing. And so after weeks of having this uh, job description up, I went in and put education back in. And I specifically said, you'll notice that education is not listed as a requirement. We really do mean it. If you think you have the skills as listed in this job description to do this job, please do apply. We had three times the number of applicants in the next 24 hours that we ever had for any other uh, position that was similar to that. And we hired two people in that one in that job and one a few months later that was completely unqualified for that job but perfectly qualified for another job and she's one of our top employees she won our values award last year um, for the uh, employee that expressed the values of our company the most and we gave her a job that she had never done before because we gave her the courage to apply for it i love that when you're when you're working with companies and you're you're working you work with a variety of different type of companies and providers, what is it that you're saying to them or selling to them to get them out of that typical box of how we hire in the educational yeah. background needed? Well, statistically, depending on which study you look at, it's between seventy two and eighty five percent of the reason why people get promoted or fired are their skills and abilities. Um, It's not their education, right? Correct. It's really their behaviors and their mindset. Correct. Um, But their behaviors and their mindsets are usually not the criteria with which you filter them. They're certainly not in your your applicant tracking system. Um, And so what I believe is the right thing to happen and what we find our clients do best is Instead of HR asking you, hey, Mr. Hiring Manager, what do you want? You know, I don't care what you want. I want to know what you have so I can identify what you need. And frankly, I don't really give a damn if you want to go mountain biking with someone or you want to relate to these types of people. I want to find out what the skills are, the thing that people misunderstand is that you can model the skills off of a bunch of middle-aged white guys, and those skills are the exact same skills that you might find in a 25-year-old person of color or females or somebody with a completely different background because skills are completely different, I mean, can be completely consistent across ethnicity, across age, and all those different things. And so if you identify the skills that you need and you can quantify that, which we help people do that, if you can quantify that, then you will find that you will hire at the demographic levels of your area. We found, we had one company named Swisslog that used our tools uh, and just abandoned all their other requirements because they provided the training mm-hmm. on their system. They had a proprietary system, so they just needed to find someone – Uh, find people that had the right behaviors and mindset to be able to do it. And they completely transformed um, their, you know, diversity and, and the, the, the type of people that they had 
to meet or exceed the demographics of every single area where their company was. And previously, they were like, they came to me and said, Michael, we can't find people of color or you know younger people to work for our company. And ironically, it was a young African American man that told me that. And and I'm like, well, you're there. <laughs> so what got you there? And he goes, well, I really felt like I was qualified for this. I said, well, let's use that. Let's yeah. use the, let's use the skills and let's abandon all the other stuff. And they did, yeah. but they had to go against their HR team to do it. Mm-hmm. The HR team said, no, we can't hire this way. And he goes, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And that guy got promoted and his boss next year became president of the company. Coincidence? I don't know. Mm. I love it. I love it. So what I heard you say, we actually have some similarities in approach with, um, With my clients, I I look at the team dynamics, which is exactly what you said. You just said in a little bit different way with what do you have now? What is it you're trying to do or fill? So your strengths, your gaps, your blind spots. And then let's go create and add a job description that actually attracts who and what we're trying to attract. And then we bring them into our fold, mentor them, guide them. Yeah keep them into the boundaries of our workplace culture of what right looks like. I love that. I love that. I love that. Let's, let's. It's key. Well, I love what you said. It, when you hire them, it's the beginning of their development. Yes. It, it, you have to commit to helping them become the best version of that person that they can be. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what? The, the most amazing thing is if, if somebody really believes that they're a better person because they work for you and they work in that organization, you have built a loyalty and a bond there that will transcend market conditions, that will transcend salary and benefits and all these other things. Because where else have they ever felt that invested in? Absolutely. That changes everything. It does. Uh, survives pandemics, uh, for example. <laughs> Without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the, see, it's the basics of seeing, valued, and heard and how we create inclusion. And mm-hmm. um, it's, it's uh, frustrating. I don't know if you find it's frustrating when there is, even in today's world, there is such misunderstanding of diversity, equity, inclusion, behavioral hardwiring, cultural philosophies, how, how do we mentor? How do we guide? How do we career path? And all of those things are unique in their own, but, but they all have a starting point, and that is the human being. And who are they and how do they fit in um, to that? Um, so my, my philosophy on, on that, and I talk to a lot of companies because we work for all these types of programs, mm-hmm. is that I want to hire for diversity of thought but predictability of behavior. Ah, you just said something key. I, I'm a huge, uh, you, you've used behavior a few times. So uh, for those of you who watch me and, and listen, know that I love the behavioral assessment predictive index because there are behavioral hardwirings that we look for that make sense inside of the organizations and the teams that we have. And why would you not want to hire somebody who's already naturally aligned because then their behavior is predictable and their success rate increases substantially when we have that alignment. It's if, if we're hiring for, for someone to swim and we have a, a cow apply and we have a dolphin apply, well, purely by the behavioral hardwiring of the environment, obviously the dolphin is gonna do it comfortably. It does not mean that the cow cannot swim. What is, he can't sustain being in the water 24 seven. So why would you not sure. hire that behavioral sure. hardwiring piece? Let's, let's yeah, we, we have a behavioral science that measures 102 um, behaviors and mindsets, mm-hmm. and that's what we use in the coaching tools and uh, the you know making sure people are in the right fit for the job. So it's it's similar to predictive index. It's just mm-hmm. a lot more in depth. Right. Um, and detailed. You know, the key for all of the assessments, regardless of what you've used, I've used many myself, is the science behind it, the validity behind mm-hmm. it. And then when you get it, use it and be consistent yeah. about it. So there are yeah. there are many out there, but use use what it is that you bring in, you know, consistently in order to do for so. Sure. Let's switch gears for the second half here a little bit and talk to me about your thoughts around the certifications and the qualifications. It obviously runs parallel to the conversation we've already had, but what do you suggest 
when a company is looking at a variety of certifications for their employees, uh, because they're now in their system, what is it you think that they should do or look for that's maybe a little different from what is looked at now? Well, I, I think they really ought to look at those uh, direct path uh, validated certificates, right? Mm -hmm. So a validated certificate, a good way to find them out is to go to a partner of ours called Credential Engine. And uh, Credential Engine has a national credential registry. Um, that has, I think they just crossed over a million different credentials. And you can first look for a validated credential, right? This has um, been, you know, identified as something that has specific skills related to it. Um, and so they have a marrying of skills to the credential itself. Um, then uh, there are other organizations that, um, like uh, Credly, that have solutions that allow people to, you know, put their credentials and, and badges in a way that um, are presented at, like a resume. So those are uh, things that I would offer um, for employers to get educated about. Um, but the biggest thing is I would say, if, if you don't require, first do an inventory of the people that you have, what credentials do they have? And then if you don't specifically require a particular type of credential like a bachelor's degree, um, then don't include that, right? Look at the specific training that, and, and say, what was in that training? Do you have a credential that says you can do this? And then give them the opportunity to communicate that. I examples are of mistakes that people have made. I think 60, uh, Burning Glass said that 67%, I believe, of network administrators for, you know, working on your Wi-Fi and your internet, um, uh, 67% of them uh, don't have, no, uh, I, I think only 27%, yes, this is what it is, 27% of them have a um, four-year degree, but 62 or 67% of the job descriptions require one, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the gap of what is actually working for people in the job is not aligned with what employers are asking for. Those jobs do not require a four-year degree. Those jobs require specific training on specific hardware and specific software. So understand what that is. Understand what is available in your local community colleges and your local programs. Get involved in those programs. Recruit directly out of those programs. There's a great one called um, Perscolis nationally. There's one called Activate IT. There's, there, look for those types of workforce programs. If there is a, a sector partnership provided by your state's Workforce Development Council, there's one for every industry just about in every single state. I co-chair one called Tech Talent Denver for uh, the tech companies in, in our city. And what we do in these sector partnerships is connect programs to employers, right? So if you have a question about what programs you know, train people for this and that, find a sector partnership is what it's called, uh, usually from your state's Workforce Development Council or Department of Labor, and they can help educate you. Love it. Those are phenomenal resources and great tips. So Michael, I appreciate you being on here today. Our half hour has gone by rather quickly. We've gotten okay. into all kinds of, of different things here. What are some closing thoughts, maybe something that you wanted to say that I didn't ask you? And then by all means, give us the best way that we can learn more about yourself and or Perrin and to get in contact with you with some of the tips that you've given today. Yeah, I'd say the second question first, you can go to Perrin.com, P-A-I-R-I-N.com. Uh, you can learn quite a bit about me. You can find my LinkedIn profile, connect, um, or even, I believe, email me directly from there. Uh, so feel free to do that. I'd love to connect with you. Um, I, I'd say my, my closing thoughts are kind of pandemic related. Uh, the okay. thing that is, may have been your greatest advantage in keeping your employees and attracting employees was the culture of your organization. And when you're not together, it's a whole lot harder uh, to um, feed and nurture uh, that culture. And so 
I would say the best thing is to really spend a lot of time with your people as often one-on-one -on -one, to really have them be heard and and that they have different needs now than that you would have ever imagined. Um, so find out what their needs are and do whatever you can to meet them where they are and value the entire person. We call it value the whole person. Regardless of what they might be delivering for you, find out what, what needs they have outside of their work and see if you can not be a part of that. I love it. Those are great closing comments. Michael Simpson, CEO of Perrin, thank you for being with us today. We appreciate your, your ideas, thoughts, insight, and definitely some great tips that you gave. If you want to know more about workplace culture, how to engage, how to interact, and obviously how to include your team members, by all means, this is why you need to reach out to me. Continue to, to follow, send in your questions and your comments. I appreciate you, every single one of you. Until next time, be well, be safe. And remember, workplace culture isn't built in a day. It's built every day, and it starts with you. What are you going to do on purpose today to make a great impact? Be well.